What is up in this John? It's your boy IBS Kelso coming back with another MX Bikes banger. And in today's video, we have a huge decision to make here in MX Bikes. And that is what bike I want to use for outdoors. And I'm torn between three bikes right now. The KTM, the Husqvarna, and the Honda. All 250s that are really great at competing and actually can get you a qualifying spot and tackle any track that's really rough. And I know going into round one, Paula, it is going to be absolutely gnarly. You guys can see from round one IRL just how dirty, crazy, and like rutted up it was. So I can only imagine inside this game, it's going to be the exact same thing on Friday. So we're going to have to really lock in. I'm going to try to push these bikes to the best of my ability. I want to start on the Husqvarna today since uh, this is my least ridden, I mean, like ridden bike. I, I don't really have much hours on this tra uh, bike anymore like I used to. I was really practicing it for Supercross. So I really want to see if it can compete and actually win my heart over from the KTM and the Honda because those two are probably my go-tos right now. But so far, we're going to do about maybe, like maybe two to three laps on each bike, and I'm really enjoying the suspension on this bike. It's not bad. It's actually staying up high on RPM, so it might win me over. But right now, we just got to make a decision at the end, really go through all three bikes and see how we are feeling at the end of it. But it's coming up quick, guys. It's coming up so quick, and I, I know I'm, I'm going to be ready for it, but we got to put in a lot of good practice. So, yeah, we're here at the Goat Farm. Uh, created by JB. It is about $4 on the MX Bike Shop. I'll make sure to have it linked down there. But I haven't ridden this track in a very long time. And I think it's really good for a lot of practice, especially for what I'm about to do here is just test all these bikes out to see what's the best bang for my buck. So I don't know. I definitely recommend picking this one up. So we're going to lock in. And so far, I feel like right now, this bike is just eating up a lot of bumps. I feel very planted. I feel like it's not really bouncing, not doing anything crazy. Have, have like a full bearings and man, why does this freaking <laughs> every time i go around this freaking little corner i always forget that's a little slow down little spot but um yeah i mean i, I like the bike so far you know and i gotta understand what's gonna get me to qualify what's gonna get me to stay consistent and what's gonna get me to feel comfortable the whole time you know like really starting out a season as a season opener you you need to come out with a bang you know you need to come out with a huge bang and understand all right bet this is how i set the tone I can't change up. I can't have any doubts. And that's what I need to understand. So I need to do that before Friday hits. So I know for sure I'm locked in on that bike. And I feel like the Husqvarna can really get me there. You know, it's not a bad bike. And it's, it's something that a lot of people are saying that it's going to be good for outdoors. And you're probably going to see a lot of Husqvarnas out there. I would love to go with the team. I would love to go with the, you know, fighting force of do a Husky. I would love to go with a fighting force to do a KTM and a Honda, but it comes down to what I feel like I'm going to be most comfortable on and what I have the most, you know, time and feel like, you know what? Yep, that's me. That's 100% me. I, I feel I look good on that bike. I feel good. You know, like you got to play the part. You can't just ride the bike because, you know, everybody else is riding it. You know, you got to feel something for it. And I got to say, man, I am a huge advocate for the for the Husqvarna. I've ridden a lot. You know, I've rode this bike a lot uh, for, for Supercross. I did a lot of testing on it. Um, I used to ride this bike a lot before even then, so I have a lot of time on it, but I feel it feels foreign to me right now. It just feels like I'm, I'm not understanding where I can push this bike where I can't. But right now, I will say out of all three bikes so far, starting off with this, I feel comfortable. I mean, what was that? Oh, holy smokes. Almost had a little front tuck there. Oh, jump up. Here we go. Now, for any of you who have not watched my latest video, I did qualify at San Bernardino or Glen Helen <laughs> here recently. And that's probably the most roughest track in MX Bikes right now. I was going to hop on that, but I just made a video on it, and I just didn't want to go back uh, to that track once again. So decided to change up. That way I'm not showing off the same track over and over again. But, man, dude, I got to say, dude, that was so fun. And I, I qualified drunk, so I really am actually having high hopes. And that kind of gives me a huge confidence booster going into the outdoors uh, coming up. Because if I'm not drunk and I could qualify then on really rough and I did on the Honda, I have high hopes for myself to actually try to qualify for outdoors, especially for JVs still making the tracks. I'm actually excited. You know, I'm 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 ready. I'm, I'm hungry for it. You know, I think it's going to be a good season. But once again, like the Honda made me in there, but I qualified 33rd. So I almost I, I barely qualified in, you know, I was like two slots away from not qualifying, but I, I made it in. So it's like, did I really push? Did I really push P to actually make it in? Or did I like squeeze by? So it's just something I have to really look forward to and understand, okay, I made it in, but it was it enough with the Honda? Like, was it enough to defeat Mr. Electric? <laughs> Shout out to Shark Boy and Lava Girl. 
but I, I have to see and I have to understand if I would have written this Husqvarna, would I have had a better time? Would I have qualified better? Would I have, you know, really found a better flow on that track? And I just don't know, you know? I haven't tested it out, haven't went back and tried if another bike would have actually got me where I needed to be. But right now, I'm actually vibing with the Husqvarna. I can see why everybody's starting to use it. It's just literally eating up, literally eating up all of these bumps, man. I love it. Oh. Slow down, nice. I'll go one more, dude. I'll go one more for the culture because honestly, I'm really gelling with it. I wanted to do like, I don't know. I wanted to do two or so laps, but three to four is probably gonna push P for me. There we go. Oh, I like the power band on it too. I feel like they've done a, oh no. I feel like they've done a good job with this Husqvarna because before this patch came out, this bike was had no power to it whatsoever. Like it, it was very, it's always been a really good planted bike but it never had any power to compete. And that's where I felt like I lost interest in this bike a very long time ago. And I kind of just never looked back at it. But man, does this thing feel super great now, um, the way they have this thing set up. So huge shout out to the OEM team. And that was on me. I definitely seat bounced at the wrong time or try to scrub, definitely try to scrub too low. And that's something I got to also look forward to. You know, we're not doing super cross. So like I need the scrub and all that, but I don't need to go overly crazy with it. I need to stay consistent. You know, con con consistency is going to be the key here. And if I can't stay consistent, then what am I doing, you know, riding motocross? You know, you got to do, you got to be able to at least do 30 minute motos, at least one, you know what I mean? Like lock it in for two 30 minute motos. If I can't sit here and stay consistent for three laps and try to stay up on the bike, I'm going to have a hard time. So, excuse me. That's what I'm really trying to focus on as well. Ooh, scrub a root though. A nice little whip. We'll turn out whip. Really beautiful track, though. I think JV did such a great job on this track. There we go. Lock in. Go. I really want to test uh, on a rougher track, like off camera, if I can go to Glen Helen later and actually see if this bike's going to really compete there. Oh, or is it just a fluke and I'm kind of just riding a beautiful track? I'm not saying this track's not not gnarly. Not gnarly enough to like actually make me fall, which I am still falling. It has a good amount of roughness, and it is the same guy that's creating you know the, the mxgp so i think he just really upped it for mxgp gnarly dude hands down so yeah i would say right now the husqvarna loki has my heart it might be a go-to for sure um but i can't say i can't i can't for sure guarantee that yet until i get on this ktm coming up and then the honda's gonna be last you shout out to splash bro he read he read this he, he rode this bike last night and man he had like a 25 gap on everybody dude that was absolutely insane but that was a good three laps i like it um it felt really planted but let's go ahead and go into our ktm um i feel like this and the husqvarna has everybody beat but you really got to be able to put it to the test i think it has a huge front tuck thing i'm starting to see more front tucking on this bike than i was on the husqvarna but this thing really has some um Oomph, oomph, oomph. <laughs> and it's actually really worth trying out um i think a lot of you guys out there if you're new to mx bikes and you really want something that's going to give you um your really best bang for your buck is definitely going to be the ktm like some it's really just a good starter bike right now i would have said the honda but it has a lot of power and something really hard to wield at times i feel but if you're looking for something that has like uh, all around power all around suspension something really great it's definitely going to be this ktm man this thing is absolutely wonders for you Let's look at it dude turning like the turning is so good on this bike dude that is what i love about this bike like man you can really toe drag swag these bars and i love that and it's just easy on the eyes you know i obviously have the shout to vtx i have a vtx skin on it which is a nice little ice white on it with a blue but that orange man does pop when you have a good orange on it but man dude let's ride up i feel so comfortable on this bike as well like it's just weird to me you know like that's why i'm so torn between all three of these bikes like i love the husqvarna it's so it's so nimble it's so clean with it it's so like just beautiful you know it's a beautiful bike really there and planted and then you got the ktm that has like all the power in the world light willing to like put down anybody that tries to step up against it look at that dude oh my gosh and then it's just like it's like what do you choose man like what do you think is going to actually get you to the end like to the light at the end of the tunnel you know and i really am just like not understanding what bike you know if i could run all three bikes and put them as a mixture and put them all together i would you know but that's like not not it you know and i feel like i would definitely lose out on a lot if i tried to go qualifying on a ktm 
and doing Moto One on a Husqvarna, and then doing Moto Two on a Honda. Like I, you can't even do that, you know. You know, there's no leaving. But like, it's just like that's three different bikes, three different physics that all three of these bikes have, and you just it's not it's not viable to me personally it's not viable and i need to find something like i said through the roughness now i don't know if this bike i if the if the suspension i have on this bike is going to be anywhere near what i really have for the husqvarna's um i have written this track at trentino portugal and i will say honestly the suspension i have for a little bit rougher tracks just really does not gel i feel a gel with me i feel like i literally mess up the most being there man i need to take that big boy line i don't know why i keep taking this outside but yeah i just don't i just don't gel with my suspension that i have or the setup i have for it for outdoors so i'm definitely gonna have to be looking into maybe getting me a different suspension um if we really want to choose but right now it's kind of soaking up everything here oh my god that was definitely on me bad angle into the corner boys do not go at a freaking v line corner <laughs> do not go v line into a corner yeah, I don't know why I mess up on this. Like, I feel like there's no engine braking, and I literally forget to slow down every time. I need to actually use those braking bumps going up that kind of little, little hill. But, man, fourth gear, you can see. I'm literally fourth gear, and I'm actually moving. Dude, like, this bike picked up so much speed so quick. Oh, there we go, baby. Let's go, Baru. Rendezvous. That's a beautiful bike, dude. Try to really lock in. you really just pick the speed back up staying in third like i feel like that's the beautiful so that's what that's like really what's beautiful about this bike is like the rpms and i'm keeping up the power is not hard on this bike oh definitely ran out of that rut that was unfortunate that was unfortunate scrubberoo though there we go i don't know why i've been actually enjoying fourth gear lately right here on this bike I feel like I just keep up a lot of my momentum on this on this bike and stay up there. Nice, big boy. Let's go down the second. Get another freaking lap going. <laughs> scrub, too low of a scrub. Yeah, this freaking bike is amazing. It's definitely up there. I feel like right now I was low key like teeter totting with the Husqvarna. Like I was trying to push it, but I just. Like, I felt really planted on the bike, so it felt like as if I wasn't even, I was floating like a butterfly. Like, I felt like I was moving, but I like, and I felt like I was just in place, like, but I was actually doing good. Like, I'm at a two, I think I'm at a 213 for this track as well, or for this bike. Yeah, I'm at a 213. So right now, like, I'm not getting anything lower, because I think I'm messing up in certain spots. And I think it said, like, my ideal was like a 209 on the Husqvarna. So I really want to see where my ideal will be for this bike, but I actually don't mess up. So I'll try to run a really good lap here already up on our time as well once again i'm not really trying to go for heaters i'm just trying to feel comfortable on these bikes probably should have done like five laps on each bike and compared the ideal probably compared ideal laps but not really what i'm here for but i know i can i know i can run heaters on all three of these bikes it's just a it's a matter of time of understanding what bike's gonna get it for me uh, scrub now i will say jet lawrence man or chase sexton Chase Sexton, I think he has the speed for outdoors. I'll talk a little bit about outdoors right now. I think Chase Sexton has the speed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with Jet, but it's about his consistency. I think he gets so he gets so fast that he messes up. <laughs> he, he literally messes up so bad. And I and I feel bad because like he has the speed, he'll get there, and as soon as he sees Jet in sight, he literally tries to push at the wrong times. Like I literally think he's pushing that bike at wrong times, trying to make bad passes. And I think that's what's really wrong with him. Um, and I feel like he's going to clean that up. And I know he's hungry for it. He knows he has the energy. So I think he's going into a confidence booster into round two. But, you know, I think Jet Lawrence, man, is beyond me. I, I, I He's he's literally going to be the king of, of outdoors. Like the next Ricky Carmichael. I know everybody hates it. But, I mean, they hated Ricky Carmichael when he started being the exact same thing. But why, why, why do that to the GOAT, man? I mean, he's really changing the sport. Changing a lot of people's minds, man. I think he is going to go 22 and 0. I mean, that's my own personal opinion. I do think he's going to go 22 and 0. But I mean, what can you say? What What can you say? You know. So I I, I want to see Chase Sexton battle, but I don't want to see him win any moto. I do think Jet's going to take that. But um, yeah, those are about three laps right there on the KTM. Let's go into our next bike, which is going to be the Honda. It's Honda time, baby. I think I saved this bike best for last. Reason being said is I. 
I know I'm gonna end up choosing this bike for sure. Um, I just have the most hours. I feel like I'm very consistent on this bike. And if it was gonna be a secondhand pick right now from riding the KTM to the Husqvarna, I would pick the Husqvarna over the KTM. That bike felt way more planted than the KTM, respectfully. Um, I liked it, but yeah, it's just it's not having my heart. And or it could just be the setup I have. But man, I mean, you can already see how I'm riding this bike. I feel so comfortable on this bike. It's absolutely insane. I just have so much hours on it right now. Like I literally, every time I start a stream up, dude, I'm literally on this bike and I'm on it forever. So you can just see how I want to ride. I'm actually pushing, I'm comfortable. I know exactly how the bike's going to gel, how it's going to move on me, the weight of it. So I can definitely tell how, you know, light the Husqvarna and KTM was. This is definitely a little bit more heavy. So it's something I'm kind of used to now, just understanding the, the physics of it. And like I said, every bike is different, but this, this bike takes a little bit to wield, a little bit of, uh, you know, I guess I shouldn't say skill, but just practice to wield. It is a different, different tone on this bike to understand where you really come from, because you can't just sit here and think you're going to do everything what a KTM or Husqvarna can do. It takes patience, it takes skills, and like you, like you can just feel the weight already riding this bike. The weight is completely different, so... I was able to say like KTM like fourth gear RPMs shooting up high, you know, you got to drop back down a second on this boat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I would love to go fourth gear and actually feel like I have a lot of uh, motion in the ocean, but not on this bike right now, dude. I'll keep it a buck. Like you have to stay in a lower gear to keep those RPMs up in order for you to even get to up to second gear. So second gear is a lot for this bike. Third gear is amazing. You can push it up to fourth once when you already start, to already have the bike moving, but that's about it, man. You can't can't go crazy with it like i was on the ktm but man this thing it feels so good so planted i have a really good setup on this i'm planning on coming out with a setup video here soon for you guys for this bike i know for sure i have one almost in the works it's almost completed um I unfortunately can't give out this one but i do have a second best runner up that i can give out given out to a couple guys and they already enjoy the track uh, already enjoy it so something i'm definitely gonna have to show to the rest of the community and uh, speaking of the community, man, thank you guys for almost 28,000 views. I mean, 28,000 subs on the channel, man. You guys have been absolutely killing it. Uh, we're almost at 30K, man. I greatly appreciate you. I think my goal right now is to try to hit 30K in the middle, I mean, in the month of May. Uh, we almost went up 10K subs in a month. So I'll take 8K. I'll take 8,000 subs in a month for sure. I'm, I'm not being like, I'm not being taking any of that for granted. Um, it's just, you know, I'm hungry, man. I'm hungry for it all. And I, I fight every day and, and, I challenge myself, you know, to try to get, be a little bit better, do a little bit better every day. So it'd be really cool if I got to 30K. If not, no harm, no foul. We'll just get into the next month, man. But yeah, I appreciate you guys so much for the support. Just clicking on all my videos. But you can just see right now, dude, I'm ripping up, dude. I felt like I was going so slow between the KTM and the Husqvarna. But right now, man, this thing's got my freaking heart. Oh, I didn't see that. Y'all didn't see that. Y'all did not see that. Oh, slow down. There we go. Oh man, dude. I don't know why, bro. As soon as I open my mouth, and every time I get to this freaking corner, it sucks. Every time I get to this corner, it sucks, man. Gosh, I can never figure out how to do that, bro. Like, I think, I, I think I'm slowed up. Like, I'm slowed up enough, and then, like, I'm not. Like, I, I think I slowed up enough, and then I don't, you know? Like, what is that, bro? There we go, baby. There we go, baby. Lower down, connect, connect, connect. Yes, sir. Yeah, I did qualify on this on this bike though at Glen Helen. You know what I mean? So I, I had it, you know, and I felt like I had even more to push. But like I said, dude, I was like, I did I did qualify drunk. So like, make that one make sense, man. I I was already feeling it, dude. My brain was not moving as much as I thought I was. I mean, I qualified still 100, percent but like, I felt like I definitely had a 55 in me. I just really wasn't understanding where I was losing time. It was I was starting to get literally harder. Like it was harder to see every every moment I stayed awake. So every more more I rid, r rode, it was bad. But yeah, I think the whole like I made it, but like the whole field ended up laughing me anyway. I just could not stay on the bike, bro. I was having a hard time. It was it was definitely donezo time for me. But and we're cooking, dude. I'm at a 2:11 already. Two minutes. So I've already beaten both times that I've ran. I've already beaten both times that I've ran on the Cuscovarna and KTM. So obviously right now, I feel more relaxed on this bike. I feel more planted. And I did fall. <laughs> I did fall on this lap over there. So like, I really wonder if I didn't, I'd probably be hitting a 208, maybe 209. I probably definitely lost a little bit of time. Oh, make it. Beautiful. 
Nice. Keeping up as much power and momentum as I can. Beautiful. Scrub in here. Nice. Just love it, dude. I just love this freaking track. I think it was a huge, huge W of a track to actually use as a as a placement. I should have took that inside. Or did I actually make time up on that? I think I did. Wasn't much, but yeah, I think it was like a huge spot to come and practice, dude. Because this, this track is absolutely beautiful, man. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm talking too much. I'm talking too much. I'm yapping. I'm yapping and I forgot where I'm at, bro. I don't know why. It is every time that spot literally ruins me, man. That spot literally ruins me, bro. Hopefully on the next freaking lap, we can go a little crazy. Next lap, we'll go a little bit crazy. Yeah, I think this thing, are, I think I've already made my decision. Just how this thing is riding and how comfortable I feel on it. Um, the, the Honda's definitely gonna be my decision for outdoors. I'm super excited for round one, Paula, and I hope a lot of you guys kind of show out. I know a lot of people are gonna try to qualify. I was gonna do EU. I was gonna do EU, but um, it kind of just doesn't set up for where I, for where what I'm doing for work. I'm doing night shift now, so I was gonna do EU to try to do um, you know try to salvage. But man, I I just don't feel like waking up that early, trying to qualify, then having to go back to bed a little bit later. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna be super exhausted. I'm only getting like five hours of sleep as it is, so I just don't want to. I don't want to ruin that for myself. <laughs> Got to get at least four, you know, at least four to five for the body to function. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I am going to be doing NA. I don't think it's unfortunate. I just think, man, there's so many people that sit here and do hot laps all day, where like I'm so surprised I even qualified for NA last night, even being drunk, man. Like realistically, I thought I was done. So, I'm being drunk. Literally, everybody grinding all day. You know what I mean? But. Man, we did that, John, dude. I, I kid you not. That is a huge achievement to be able to do that and be drunk, you know. So, I'll take that. I'll take that as a compliment. That is a that that's a little chip on my shoulder. That's a that's a huge confidence booster going into uh, NA, so or outdoors. Sorry to not. Oh, I probably, dude. I don't even think I needed to touch the brakes right there. I had connected in that so well. I think I need to practice on that, like understanding that I can actually run it up in a freaking section when I even have to touch the, the brakes. That felt fast. See, I didn't even have to touch the brakes there either. Just literally let the bike do its thing. I low-key lost a little bit of time, but I gained it. Beautiful. All right, chat. Let's remember. Come on, guys. Come on. Use those braking bubs. There we go, baby. Easy peasy. Let's run this last little freaking lap. Let's run it with some style. Running with some style. Scrub a roo. Rendezvous. Easy peasy. Nice. Yeah, the Honda's is going to be a dude. Huge shout out to HSM as well. Huge shout out to BTX for amazing gear, graphics. I mean, bike designs, man. It's just literally believing in me. Literally sitting here and going on this journey with me as we continue on. We go into motocross. Um, you guys have been absolutely killing it. I greatly appreciate you to just sit behind me. If you guys have watched this, this long into the video, you know, just go ahead and pat yourself on the back, man, because you guys do an absolute wonders on, on graphics, gear skin, bike skins, all that jazz. So, And W community as well behind both of them. Really just stay here and ask all the time if I need anything. So, Yeah, man, I think that's going to be the end of the video. Um, I think I've made my decision for sure. Um, I think if I really needed to switch up bikes, it's definitely going to be the Husqvarna. Yeah, it's going to be the Husqvarna before the KTM for sure. Um, I do feel a little bit more planted on that bike, so I'm going to give that a go. But right now, I mean, look at us, 209, easy peasy, definitely the Honda. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching this. If you guys haven't hit that sub button or like button, definitely hit one. And let me know down in the comment section what is your favorite bike going into outdoors and what are you going to be using. Um, other than that, man, I'll catch you guys all in the next one. It's your boy, IBS Kelso. Pa, 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 pa